Hi, I'm Cash, and welcome back to Cash Talks Football. And I'm going to show you the breakdown here of England playing terrible against Denmark and re emphasize some of the points that I've been making about this England team and why they're so terrible. Okay, so it's basically the balance of the team is all over the place. And it does start at the back with Kieran Trippier. Uh, and it's not because Trippier is playing badly, it's because he's not a traditional left back. So when you play players out of position, their mindset has completely changed. And then what? Uh, it's, it's just totally different. It's like you're setting up the player to f uh, fail. And they've done it with Phil Foden, and they've done it with Trent Alexander Arnold. Um, and it just, the balance is all off. And that's the main problem. So right now, you can't really pass the ball or do anything except for maybe pass the ball wide here or wide here. And they do in a second to Carl Walker. But I'm really trying to emphasize the key points of what you'd really want is a player about here or maybe because uh, Bellowing has gone a little bit early to so about here. Uh, so you can actually try to connect and bring Saka in. Look, he's making a little dart in run there. You can see the massive space. This would be a perfect opportunity to play a ball in. But there's no player here or anywhere close that can thread that ball through because we've got like a straight line here for some reason and we've got Trent sitting back because he's probably been told to do that with Declan Rice and he's not a traditional midfielder so he doesn't know what he's doing and it's making him look bad same as Phil Foden's been made to look bad because they're just playing totally out of position um, but let's just move this on. I'm going to talk a little bit more about Trippier and uh, the balance and why you need that left back there because well I'll just do it now the left back um, because if, if the back four isn't stable in the first place, then the midfield has issues and then those ripple all the way through the team. And it's little tiny things that make the difference, especially at the international level. But I want to uh, show you exactly when the England do get it right, what happens. And literally, this is only a couple of seconds on, but what's actually happened is because the ball's gone out wide um, to uh, Kyle Walker here, and he's played a ball into his club teammate here, and he gets a shot off. Now, I, th I think his shot selection is completely wrong here. I'm going to cover that in a second. But you can actually see, because their back four has dropped, it has actually made England look a little bit better, because now everybody is looking like they're connecting, except for this guy here. He should probably get getting further forward, but he's not. And I think that's, again, Southgate trying to play defensively like he does, and not allowing his players to roam forward and connect the midfield to the attack as easy as they can. And that's why they don't look so fluid. I want to uh, look at this uh, shot selection here by Phil Foden because he's good enough. What he should have been doing right here, he's gone for his patented, which he normally does, bend it into the top corner. And he doesn't see the situation because he can just roll it. Oh my God, that's a terrible line. He can roll it into this bottom corner right here because he has wrong-footed everybody. And he's good enough to do this, right? So as he turns, bump, goes through there. And here we are on that shot selection. He is lit. He, sorry, he's, he's literally telegraphing his move there. And all he has to do is go down there. He doesn't quite see it, unfortunately. So when he takes his shot, bump, it goes over because he's scooping it. He could have just carried it. And the reason why I'm saying that is you can look at his finishing of his body position. As he struck the ball, if he's gone for this bottom corner, he was basically what's called pulling the shot. He's pulling it and he's pulling it into that bottom corner anyway. So that's what he would have been better off doing on this opportunity. Let's get on to the next part. So here we are. When I was watching this live, the first thing I said when I saw this happening, I'm like, Carl Walker's going to win that because he's that fast. And it doesn't matter what this guy's going to do. He just wasn't paying any attention. Had no idea Carl Walker was coming. As soon as that was going on, I was like, yeah, Carl Walker's going to win that. Um, and that's the difference of absolute great, fantastic pace, which he has. And he just nicks, him, nicks the ball there. But that's not England playing great. It's Denmark playing lackadaisical and not actually defending properly and not being at 100%. And that's why England have capitalised. You can say, oh, yeah, but England had to play at 100% to get that. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But that's one. Then you've got two with a little uh, little ricochet here. Three, and another little ricochet. And it falls to Harry Kane, who just gets to tap it into the net box to get himself a goal. Bosh, in it goes. Yeah. But that's probably the only clear-cut chance England have really got to score in this game. The rest, because they've just got, they've got the creative players. As again, I say, the balance isn't right, so they're not getting on the ball in the right areas, and they can't create for Saka and um, Kane to score goals. So in this situation here, you can see Trent Alexander-Arnold. I think it's, he's right here. Rice is out of position. He's just well. Here's the thing: is he really no? But he's, he is. He should be about there. Two centre backs with two midfielders in front of him, and he's a couple of yards away, and he can't get the block in. But Trent, if he's a real midfielder. He is sprinting out to try to pressure this ball, knowing that they, that's what his job is. Making sure when they try to make a pass or do anything, the back four intercepts it. But that's not what he's used to doing. He's used to sitting back and waiting for someone to pressure the ball, and him being the ones intercepting the pass. So this doesn't help him here. So when this comes in right here, look, Dosh, 
you've the conscious sorry um uh you've, you've got i think this is Declan rice here coming towards the ball but he's making no effort to get towards the ball whatsoever now the other thing trent is doing right here he's doing the classic thing that i make fun of all the premier league players from doing well i'm marking my player yeah but you've got to be pressuring the ball there's nobody between the ball and the goal but trent well you can class him but obviously trent is the one that needs to be pressuring it and any pressure will do because you cannot allow this guy just to take this strike here and just rifle it into the bottom corner there. And Pickford probably should do better, but I think he's an awful goalkeeper anyway. Denmark make that look really, really easy, but there's no pressure in the midfield outside of the 18-yard box from England, and that's the reason why they're absolutely terrible. No pressure in the midfield, no real pressure up front, too many people standing around, the balance of the team is not correct. They're not really playing at 100 miles, um, you know, at 100%. They're like passing around at sort of 60 and 70%. And I think it's just going to get worse as the tournament progresses. Because when you start off poorly, uh, one of the other things, um, you, you can change it if, if you've got a strong and competent manager who's rallying around the troops. But after that goal went in, in the next like 15 minutes or so, the England players were all yelling and screaming at each other. And if you've got a good manager, he is telling them to shut up and get on with their jobs. It wasn't just the team captain trying to you know, talk about it. It was everybody was having an opinion. From Phil Foden to Carl Walker, everybody was having a right old go at each other. And you can't have that. So if you're having that on the field, that means that they're not really listening to their manager. They're choosing what they're doing on the field. They're really in charge, the players. And not really one unit. And that's one of the big problems Liverpool, uh, sorry, it keeps saying Liverpool or Man United, I keep doing that. Uh, England are having, just want to show you this Phil Foden, just the shape. This is what's important. But remember, he is playing out wide over there. That's his place, right? But that's not where he's good. This is where he's good. So the two times he's picked the ball up in this area, well, he should have had two goals, really. He hits the post on this one, and he went high and wide on the last one instead of dragging it into the inside post, which is the exact shot that I was trying to get him to do on the last one. But the difference of having him playing in a role where he's doing what he does for his club is world-class instead of just a passenger. And that whole side of the field there is where Denmark were attacking the whole time because, well, Foden wasn't there. Kieran Tripp is not a great left back. He's all right. But he's not a great left back. He can defend, but not really compared to really good left backs. Um, and that again goes to the balance of England and what they were getting wrong throughout this game. One last example. I think this is Jude Bellingham here. Losing a ball in midfield. And uh, he was playing beneath, beneath, uh, beneath himself as well. And it is just mindset and confidence. He's trying to turn without receiving the ball in midfield. But he's also at that stage where he's still so young and so good, he's getting to the point where, well, I should be good enough because I play for Real Madrid and I'm this player. Yeah, but you're only there because you earn it. And a lot of the players from Real Madrid, when you make a mistake like that, will cover for you and fix it. And this England team, they're not good enough to do that. Yeah, just wanted to show you that uh, one little last take there. Other than that, I'll see you next time on Cash Talks Football. Mm -hmm.